Hi, boys and girls. This is Miss Liz. Today I'm going to read to you Saving Sweetness, written by Diane Stanley and illustrated by G. Brian Karras. It's a story that takes place in the Wild West, and so I'm going to read it with a little bit of a, of an, a Texas accent. In the hottest, dustiest part of town is an orphanage run by a female person nasty enough to scare night into day. She goes by the name of Mrs. Sump, though I doubt there ever was a Mr. Sump on account of she looked like something the cat drug in and the dog wouldn't eat. I heard that Mrs. Sump doesn't much like seeing the orphans resting or having any fun, so she puts them to work scrubbing the floor with toothbrushes. Even the ittiest, bittiest orphan, little sweetness. So one day, sweetness hit the road. Now this is Sheriff Tex. I found out right away cause Mrs. Sum come busting into Loopy Lil Saloon, hollering like a banshee. Sheriff, she yelled, that's me. That provoking little twerp, I mean that dear child sweetness, done escaped, uh, I mean disappeared. And I'm fit to be tied, worrying about that poor thing, all pink and helpless, wandering lost on the plains and stepping on scorpions and falling into holes and such. You gotta bring her back alive, uh, I mean safe, before she runs into Coyote Pete. That did it. Scorpions was one thing, but Coyote Pete is as mean as an acre of rattlesnakes and the toughest, ugliest desperado in the West. So I got my star and buckled on my gun belt and headed west. It was hot as blazes. Seemed like the wind was too tired to blow. Then it got hotter. Hours passed and what with the sun beating down on me, I commenced to feel him thirsty. That was when I realized that it would have been kind of prudent to bring along some water. After some more hours, I begun to stagger with the thirst and the next thing I knowed, I was plopped down in the dirt. Fortunately, I was in the shade of a big cactus so I decided to stay there for a spell to catch my breath. Next thing I knew, I felt this cool, delicious water trickling over my tongue. I popped open my eyes and there, just a shadow against the sun, was little sweetness with a big canteen. As soon as I was watered up enough to make words come out of my mouth, I said, Why, sweetness, thank heavens I've saved you. And she said, Yes, sir, thank you. That little orphan is just as cute as a speckled pup under a wagon. Now I've come to take you home, says I. I don't want to go home, says she. I'm tired of scrubbing floors with a toothbrush. What can't, can't be cured must be endured, I told her. Now I thought that was very wise advice, but that orphan didn't seem to think so because she lit off like she was trying to catch yesterday. This day was going from bad to worse. Now I was going to have to save that orphan again. Also, if you know anything about the desert, you know that when the sun goes down in all its glory, it starts to cool off. And then it gets right cold. Also, the snakes come out. So after I headed off after sweetness, all shivering and wishing I thought I brought a blanket. I got to feeling a trifle hungry. 
too. Seems like I was wandering around among the snakes and the rocks for a coon's age, till I was so tuckered out I just curled up against a bush and fell to, fell to sleep. Pretty soon I commenced to dreamin' that I was home with my own dear mama, sitting round the fire all toasty warm, and she was cooking something nice. Then I woke up and there was the orphan and a campfire, and that little tyke was a toastin' marshmallows. Want one? says she. Well, doesn't that just beat all? Now looky here, sweetness. I says to her while I was gobbling down them marshmallows. This is the second time I done saved you and I'd very much appreciate it if you'd stay saved. So we're gonna mosey on back to that there orphanage right now. Well, I'll be darned if she didn't start to cry. Don't you like me? She asked. Well, sure I do, honey. Ain't I saved you twice? There's nothing to cry about. But she went right on bowling. I ain't got no ma, says she. I ain't got no pa. All I got is Mrs. Sump and a toothbrush. Well, ain't no way to fix that lesson you gets adopted, I explained. And she smiled up in my face like she was expecting me to say something particular. It was too deep for me. It sure is a dilemma, was all I could come up with to say. At which she throwed up her little hands in the air and stomped off into the night. Dang, says I, now you just quit that. You really fry my patience. But I was going to bring that orphan back if it hair lipped the governor. So there was the sun rising over the plains and there I was, feeling like something that was chewed up and spit out, trying to find one little orphan out in that big wild west. Now here comes the exciting part. I had gone fur enough to work up a good sweat, so I ambled over to a big rock so as I could stand in the shade. That's when I heard the sound. Just a little click, like a gun being cocked. I turned around and what I see but Coyote Pete loaded for bear and giving me a look that would freeze a cat. I had to think fast. Now you got to look at this picture really good. Especially this part. Coyote Pete, I told him, you can see by the star on my chest that I is here to uphold the law. Now you can't go around shooting folks and scaring orphans and I's here to arrest you. Now it don't seem like he heard what I said. Cause just as cool as you please, he aimed his six shooter right at my big silver star. Listen here, hamster brain, I says. You're riding for a fall. You put down that there gun or I'm gonna knock you into the middle of next week. I'm gonna snatch you bald headed. I'm going to lock you up and throw away the key. And you know what he done? He made a sound like thunk and fell over backwards, laid out cold like a sack, sack of feed. I scared him that bad. And who should show up just then but sweetness? She took off her hair ribbons and we tied that bar barman up bulletproof and pig tight. Now sweetness, I told her. I ain't having no more of this running away. You can't go roaming around this here prairie with outlaws all over the place. It's too dangerous. How many times has I got to save you? If you was as smart as you is brave, you could figure out how to save me for good, she said, looking me right in the eye. And there we stood, having a kind of staring contest. What you leading up to, says I. Think, says she. So I chewed on it a while longer. Do it have something to do with adopting? You're getting it, says she. I was starting to get a kind of purdy picture up in my head regarding me and little sweetness, 
and a couple of rocking chairs by the fire. Well, sweet child, I says to her, I knows I's a rough character, but if you was to agree to it, I could adopt you. Pa, says she, and she fell on me like grandma on a chicken snake. Then me and Sweetness rolled that varmin all the way back to town. Now here come the ending. That very day I done signed them adoption papers. And then that precious child told me about the seven other orphans and how their toothbrushes was worn down to little nubs with all that scrubbing. So I adopted them too. And as for Coyote Pete, we put him in jail and I got a big reward for bringing that varmint to justice. After a few years, they let him out and put him in the custody of a parole officer. This was none other than Mrs. Sump, who, as you can see, was out of the orphan business. And I don't know how she done it, but she got that Desperado to marry her. And now all she, he does is scrub that floor. And I can tell you, he jumps when she hollers frog. And that's the truth. The end. Saving Sweetness by Diane Stanley. Illustrated by G. Brian Karras. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope to see you soon. Thanks. Bye.